Hi everyone, I'm Rob Horlacher from Project Sandbox, a University of Lethbridge Library initiative. In this video, we're going to look at our lighting kit. In this kit, you will find three LED panels, three power adapters that have three power plugs attached to them, and three tripod stands. The first thing to set up when you get a lighting kit is one of the tripods. Um, if you want, you can set all three up at the same time. That's obviously just your own choice. Um, but this is how you set it up. So the first thing you want to do is unscrew this very bottom little bolt. Um, don't unscrew it all the way, just unscrew it just a little bit. Um, at least enough so that after you pull out the legs like I just did, this piece will slide down nicely. Um, you want to make sure that this bottom bar is parallel to the ground. Um, once that happens, just tighten this slightly. Um, and then this is set up. One thing to mention though is if you want to bring up the, uh, if you want to loosen that next bolt up, um, you might notice that this gets stuck. To do that, um, like to get it up all the way, you just need to loosen this bottom bolt a little bit and then you'll be able to extend it nicely. That's because this bottom bolt will just catch on that pole a little bit, but if you just loosen it, it should be able to come up freely like, like so. Um, then make sure you tighten everything afterwards. Um, and then your tripod is set up. You might also want to use the third extension if you want it really tall. Um, but we're just going to leave it right here for now. So after your tripod set up, the next thing that you need to do is put on the LED panel. Um, so to do that, there's a little screw on the bottom. You just loosen that until the screw that's through the hole clears it completely. Once that hole is cleared completely, you can just slide it on. Um, if for some reason it's not actually sliding down all the way like you see mine is, um, just loosen the screw a little bit more and it'll have more clearance to actually drop on. Um, after you're done that, you just tighten the screw. And then, I'm just going to loosen this so I can spin it around a little bit. If you want to spin it around, you can see that there's a little power plug right there. With the power plug, we want to loosen the Velcro strap that's around it. And then this can just be thrown on the ground for later. Do not throw this out though. You will want it to wrap this afterwards. Then you get your power plug, which just plugs into that DC 15 volt right there. Sometimes the cords can be a little bit tangled too. Make sure you untangle them. It makes your life so much easier in the long run. Um, if these two pieces have gotten disconnected, just plug it in. And then this guy will just plug into any jack that accepts just like an American plug. So now we can see the back of the panel. To flip on the light, you'll just want to look at this switch and flip it to the left. You'll see that there's a little plug to uh, know which side to actually flip it to. Don't flip it to the battery side because as you can see from these empty battery slots, we do not have the battery. So after it's plugged in, you just need to flip the light around and you can open up the barn doors. These barn doors are used to direct light in certain ways. So say you don't want a shadow to be cast in a certain way or you do. You can close these a little bit and you can direct the light however you want to. Um, we're just gonna leave it wide open for the moment though. Um, one thing to note too, is that there's a diffusion sheet at the very front of this. Um, it can be removed really easily. Um, it's also very fragile, so make sure you don't break it. Um, it just attaches with magnets. So if it does come off, you can just put it on and it'll attach nicely. Um, one thing to pay attention to is actually how you close the barn doors. So it's top and bottom first, then left and right. If you close it the opposite way, 
you'll notice that it doesn't actually close properly. So if you have that problem, remember top down, left, right, and it closes nicely. So now that the barn doors are open and your light is set up, the next step is to flip your light on. You'll see an LED panel appears um, and you can see your light is actually turned on. If you want to adjust the brightness of your light, there's a little knob back here that you can turn down from 100% to 0% or you can turn it back up. Um, depending on how bright you want the light to be. If you'll notice on the back panel too, um, there's A, B, C, D, E, F, and then a number in the bottom right hand corner. This is what gives you the ability to connect your lights together. So a neat feature of these LED lights is that they have the ability to link together, which means you can control all of them from one light. To link the lights together, what you'll want to first do is make sure that they all have the same letter. Um, to change that, you just press this GP button. Um, so all of mine are on B7, so I'll hit it until it's on B. And then to change the channel, you just press the channel and you'll notice that it starts flashing. Um, in which case, you can change it to whichever channel you like. As I said before, all of my lights are on B7. So we want to press the channel button again after we use the knob to select 7. And then we have the ability to change all of the lights simultaneously. To however bright you want. Um, if you don't want them to be linked together, just make sure you change either the GP or the channel. So now that you know how to control all of the lights, Let's look at a common lighting setup to help you do any kind of interviews or even if you're just trying to light one person. A pretty common lighting setup that you use when you're filming interviews or just one person is a, called a three-point lighting setup. So what a three-point lighting setup is it has a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. These lights work together in order to balance the light and create kind of like a nice dynamic lighting around whoever you're interviewing. So to show you kind of what it looks like, you can reference that diagram that I just showed you. Um, and we'll look to see how the light's actually falling on me. So I'm going to turn off all of these lights and then we're going to add them one by one to see what it looks like. So obviously this is what it looks like when there's no lights on me right now. Um, so the first light that we're going to turn on is the key light. The key light is the brightest light that you use in the three-point lighting setup. Next, we use the fill light. The fill light is about half the strength of the key light and it's just used to remove some of those shadows off your face. One thing I should mention is that when you set up the key light, it's about at a 45 degree angle to the camera and a little above your head. The fill light is at your um, head height. And next and finally, there's the backlight. The backlight's used to create that nice little golden ring around your head or whatever color your light is really. Um, and that just helps separate you out from the background a little bit to make you a little more apparent. Um, I'll take a picture that you can see now of this lighting setup to give you a better idea of how it actually was created. So as you can see from the picture, this is the key light, this is the fill light, and this is the backlight. So that's what I have for you. Remember, although we did discuss three-point lighting, don't feel limited to that you can only use the lights in those positions. Be creative, try out ideas you have, and see how it looks. I want to thank you for watching and I want to remind you that if you want to keep up to date with videos that the library releases, um, you can subscribe to our U of L library library page, if that's not too many libraries. And feel free to click on one of the two video links on the video right now if you would like to continue watching more Project Sandbox stuff. Have a good day and I hope you have fun with the lighting kits.